welcome to PC Woods Kids Tech Talk. Today we're looking at part two of the Cyber Power Intel Core i7 system. In part one, we did a brief overview. We went a walk through all the way through the system, and I showed you all the parts that are inside this Cooler Master 692 Advanced Edition case. So now what we're gonna do is take a look at these parts in action. So do some benchmarking, some tests on this test system. Now in Windows 7 here, we're using Home Premium 64-bit. You can see that I'm running the uh, CPU. It's a uh, quad-core, um, hyper-threaded CPU, and it's idling right now. It's basically not being utilized, so uh, you can see that uh, the processor speed is low. Okay, so it's an energy-saving feature, and of course, temperatures are low as well. Now we're using water cooling, and uh, you can see the temperatures there when it's idle. When you're utilizing the CPU, it's going to go up, the processor speed kicks in, goes higher, and um, because it's using turbo, it'll go beyond the 2.9 gigahertz to all the way up to 3.6 gigahertz, so they say in Intel. Now, uh, the Intel board that I'm using here, the DP55WG board, is a reliable, strong board like I mentioned. However, it does lack features for overclocking. Uh, the memory itself came underclocked at 5.533 megahertz. Uh, it could have been set for um, the XMP profile, but uh, instead it was not. So I had to go into the BIOS later and change the uh, BIOS setting so that it uses the XMP profile because this memory can run at uh, over uh, 2 gigahertz if, if you wanted. You could overclock it. So um, definitely good memory. Now um, the GTX 465 from Palette that we're using here also, like I mentioned, is DirectX 11 compatible now as uh, most new um, 400 series cards are from NVIDIA and uh, it's running at 256 bit uh, as you can see and 1 gig of GDDR5 and it came with the Forceware drivers 257 I upgraded it later to uh, the latest ones but I did not overclock uh, anything yet okay so we're gonna run benchmarks first that everything at defaults and um, see how it does. This is a mid-range gaming rig, just keep that in mind. It's not uh, a triple channel board using the uh, X58 chipset. So um, it is the most you can get from an LGA 1156 board, however. Okay, so uh, top of the line there with respect to that level of board. So that's why this is a mid-range system, mid-range video card, and um, with only four gigs of RAM. Now the testing tools that I'm using here are the usual, okay, CPU-Z, Core Temp, GPU, MSI, um, all of those tools there for monitoring, testing, overclocking, and of course checking out scores so I can, you know, compare benchmarks and uh, results, as well as games. We want to get a wide range of games so we can see how the uh, video card, CPU, memory, everything all works together without any bottlenecks. The kind of push push the card to limit because the GTX 465 does have CUDA it does have uh, physics so we want to see how that how that performs now here is the PC mark vantage 64 bit scores okay if you're interested in the PC mark suite scores um, there it is and the hard drive test suite was really high of course because it's using a top of the line Intel x55 80 gig um, SSD drive again I'm not overclocking the uh, CPU yet everything is at default scores Okay, all right. Here is 3D Mark 06. Again, for your information, the uh, total score and of course the CPU score in case you want to compare it with ranking. And that's what I'm going to do. I usually use 3D Mark Vantage for the CPU score and comparing my ranking. So when we rank the 19596 score from CyberPower's test system here, along with other CPUs, you can see where this one lies. Okay, again, running at default clock speeds. Of course if you overclock it, it's going to be higher. Now, when I uh, looked at the overall system and compare it to other systems, here this gives you an idea on where this system lies. Again, not overclocking the CPU. Now, if we do overclock the CPU at 4 GHz, so a huge jump from 2.9 all the way to 4 GHz using that multiplier and that bus speed, of course if we run it 100% at that it's gonna go up the temperatures big time okay so obviously I installed 
the latest drivers like I mentioned for the uh, GPU and then overclock the GPU as you can see there's the core memory and the shader um, settings that I achieved using the MSI afterburner and then I put it all together and then there's the 3D Mark Vantage score now so much higher huge improvement there you're gonna get at least 10 frames per second more by overclocking it like this okay so that gives you a good idea so next after this what we're gonna look at are games now before we get into the games the last thing I wanted to talk about is the CPU and GPU test that I did with Cinebench so running at default clock speeds here are the scores that I got with the Cinebench which really stress tests uh, rendering basically and processing so not bad at all if we overclock it to 4 gigahertz obviously the ranking goes up higher as you can see here and it outperforms those two CPUs now when it comes to the SSD benchmarks the read and the write okay very important read megabytes per second 234 on the sequential read and 83 megs per second roughly on the write and uh, the addo disk benchmark also concurred I ran that test as well that's pretty good 250 megs per second uh, when you're transferring files is a huge huge amount of data now here are the games now with Batman starting here of course we're enabling physics we're testing out everything on very high settings and getting some very nice smooth results on um, on Batman as you can see here on those two screen resolutions okay now I did run more benchmarks on different types of games more games uh, and benchmarks will be posted online on my website article now here is crisis warhead again it did stress test the GPU to the max it couldn't really do more than 38 frames per second on ultra high uh, settings so obviously I enabled enthusiast levels so with that maxed out that's all I can get on dirt 2 however using the default built-in benchmark that that game has it got huge frames per second as you can see using DirectX 11 enabled as very nice smooth graphics not bad at all next game here at Battlefield Bad Company 2 very nice first person shooter if you're uh, interested in playing these types of games wow terrific results super smooth everything maxed out of course on those two uh, screen resolutions so very nicely done and also if you play uh, Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2 same thing even faster frames per second I mean you wouldn't even need to go that high but of course super smooth maxed out everything no problems whatsoever and um, also on stalker here I uh, ran some more benchmarks as well everything on uh, ultra high full settings on the DirectX 11 as well as you can see and those are the min average and the max frames per second on the different types of uh, tests now I would have liked to see a one terabyte or a 500 gig drive included along with the SSD drive because obviously 80 gigs fills up fast um, the power supply was not modular it would have been nice to have that but the system is very nicely uh, laid out tucked away all the cables managed very nicely with that water cooling I like that as well another fan on that water cooling would add a nice push-pull effect but overall for a mid-range game PC not bad at all especially if you're not interested in putting it all together and you want it readily made then CyberPower can do that for you. So I'd like to thank CyberPower for providing it, and I hope you enjoy this video, and thank you for watching.